solar activity another thing that we can't live without without a sun life as we know it would die so the sun takes care of us it feeds our bodies we absorb things from the sun that are healthy for us but at the same time the sun can also change our way of life it could go really really crazy and send some very hot things this way and do a lot of major destruction it could burn up a whole lot of stuff if it went that far but CMEs and solar flares they jeopardize many things power is one we're in the advanced technology age aren't we everything is without our fingertips isn't it turning on the lights taking a hot shower cooking some food washing and drying your clothes mowing your grass get from point A to point B in your car, your truck, or bike mean a motorcycle or scooter airplane, travel, you name it and if our power were taken away we'd be thrown back uh, probably about 150 years something like that could you do things by hand could you grow your own food if you had good healthy seeds to do it and healthy soil chop your own wood find an alternate way to get water bathe and wash clothing get from point A to point B could you do all that? just like they did back in olden days well we're in the grand solar maximum and it hadn't been so grand so far has it? seemed fairly low until beginning on the 13th I've been watching this so it's time to everybody gets a heads up and starts realizing we're not in the same location in our travel as we were six months ago we're in a more uh, seasonal location you know we're closer to the sun and stuff <clears throat> well space and the planets are connected. The, the universe is like electric and we're all connected. We all have our fields. So on the 13th we had not had any X-class flares And on that day, there were four. I believe there were an X1, a 1.7, I think a 2.8, and a 3.8. So we hadn't had any, and then all of a sudden, wham. Well, let's go ahead and roll it. You'll see what I mean. They were rolling on the 13th. We've had some M's after this. So we, we really have seen the sun wake up and start doing uh, what they were expecting it to do. And, then, and that's uh, a flip side to that. They're really confused and baffled at the uh, what it's doing. 
and they are falling flat on their di their butt trying to predict it. I mean, they're watching it and everything, but they don't know from day to day. They see the uh, new spots emerge and whatnot, and w whether it's the you know turned away from us or turning towards us and stuff, and they can make us uh, you know a lookout tell you that it's on the other side, nothing to worry about, or it's coming around and you might get something. That's about as good as it's going to get, because they don't, they, they're really not, uh, either they know and they won't say anything, or they, uh, the article was they're telling the truth maybe, that they just can't get their guesstimates right. And you can see it's quite active. So you do get some satellite disruption, radio signals, etc., from the levels that we've we've been experiencing. But that's all it would take, folks, is to be pointed at us, and then just let a, a really big one fly, because the shields. Scotty are down almost. We need more shielding, but it is uh, taking a beating. You have harp. We don't know exactly all the full capabilities of HARP. Does HARP have a way to improve our defensive abilities against the sun if it so wished to be? Or is HARP just part of the problem, which I believe they are? Messing around with our atmosphere, stretching it, punching holes in it. So personally, I believe it'll be a matter of time. I have no exact idea when. <clears throat> but when you think about time, time doesn't always mean tomorrow or a month away or three or four or five, six months. Sometimes time can, can be a couple of years. Which when you're looking at a large amount of time, a couple of years would be nothing when time, you know, when your time runs out and you, let's say that you were going to pass away, you know, two years would be nothing, so I'm expecting something more this summer, actually. And we're here on the 20th, you can see the data rolling. I don't know if it will affect our power grid, but, uh, there's a good possibility of it, and I, I think this activity is going to roll into to the beginning of next year, more than likely. This might be one of those maximums that says, hey, you know, I was a little late to the party, but I'm here now. And I'm here for the full party. So I believe that we're not clear by any means from whatever it's going to do in these cycles. And that's the 22nd. You can see a nice boom. How you like that? Look at all that that it let out. Look how it's affecting the cameras and everything. I think I ran this to the 24th. That's a lot of energy there. And so everything goes flying around. And then here we are. And not to mention the radiation. 
you know, that our atmosphere protects us from. And when our atmosphere is damaged or weakened, it, you know, more of that gets through. But, uh, you know, we absorb, like I said before, our bodies absorb the good things that the sun puts out, but it also can absorb, you know, everything passes through you, into you, so to speak. It's in, you don't see it, but you're getting it. You know, you're not, we're not, you know, we're not supposed to get bad things from it. So, when it does these things and it does bad things, kind of rock and hard place. Got to, got to have it. Can't live without it. So God said we'd have signs, and I can't think of any. I can't, you know, as far as something above my head, I can't think of any bigger sign than to be watching except what what is a big part of taking care of us and uh, having life, the sun. So whenever it rears its mighty head and begins to do things like this, that it is showing, it is going to start doing, evidently. And it won't be on a daily basis, hopefully, but in a, in a maximum, you could see that for a few days in a row. Hopefully it wouldn't be for an extended period, but it's probably hit and miss, you know, a couple days in a row, maybe a couple off, and then we'll go from there kind of a thing. For those that don't put much faith into the idea that what this is doing or what it can be doing in the future can really, really mess things up here on the ground. I mean, just, you kind of have to just imagine what things would be like if your transportation was grounded, etc., you know, all the daily uh, things that you take for granted that you do every day. You know, with no power, there'd be nowhere to work and stuff like that. Nowhere to work equals no money. No money equals no purchasing power of anything. If there were any food which would fly off the shelves, I'm sure, very quickly. So, Solar maximums are nothing to shake your head about and think they're nothing. These grand events are fairly rare, you know, 11 years is 11 years. You know, if you live to be 77, you'll be in, theoretically, seven of them. And then, uh, what about November? You know, they've got their telescopes trained on the Grand Comet Ison. They're getting really geared up for that. And I believe that Ison uh, will be a, a pretty pretty good sign there. It's going to be really bright from what it, everything they've been saying. And you should, you should be able to see it. And... That's another thing you watch. It's comets. Stars. These are the things that ancient man watched for signs in the heavens. And we're no different than them. That's how he sh shows us signs. How else are you going to show you a sign? I mean, you got a big billboard up there. So everybody enjoy your weekend, your long weekend if you got one. Summer is almost upon us. The heat, I mean. So when it comes, do the best to stay cool that you can, because it's going to be a hot one. I'll talk to you all soon. God bless.